Thank you, sir. Good morning, Valley Forge. Now, now listen, 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 listen. I am a black Pentecostal preacher. Y'all got to speak to me this morning. I said, good morning, Valley Forge. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I am uh, so glad to be here with you today. I'm so thankful uh, for the invitation by Dr. Kim. A little bit about myself. I'm, I'm kind of like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I'm West Philadelphia, you're born and raised. This year, my wife and I will be celebrating 31 years of marriage. That's right, that's right, that's right. My wife was born and raised in Kingston, Jamaica. Anybody here from the Caribbean? Caribbean people, make some noise. Ain't no Caribbean people here? That's what I'm talking about. We have a son, we have a daughter, and we have two grandsons. And I got to tell you, my grandsons are awesome. I love my boys. I'm thankful for this school, and I'm thankful what this school is doing. And we support your, we support this school. Last year, my board and I uh, prayerfully uh, put together a scholarship. Starting last year, so starting last year, there's a thousand dollar scholarship we're giving to this school, and it's for someone who does service. It is named the Dave Fitzpatrick Scholarship. It is a uh, one of our deacons who's with the Lord now, and his, his love was to serve. And last year, one of your students received that, that scholarship. So and we're thankful to be partnering with you as, as you are uh, being raised up and being sent out to all places in the world and to various markets. So we, we appreciate you. Initially, this morning, I was going to preach a expositional sermon to you on the deity of Jesus Christ from Colossians chapter 1. But God changed that. And I believe he did that because he wanted me to talk with you today about a very important spiritual discipline, the spiritual discipline of prayer. You see, as you are beginning your life as an adult, see, who knows kids' church is over, can I get a witness? Y'all got to talk to me. Youth group is over, can I get a witness? You are stepping into the adult life. You're taking that transition into adult life. And I, I believe God wants you to understand now the importance of prayer in your life. You know, someone said a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. So this morning we're going to talk about prayer. Let's, let's, let's pray for a quick minute. Lord, be, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of being here and Lord, I pray for your anointing. I pray that you allow me to speak a prophetic word to your people today. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So when I was much younger and much thinner, I, uh, I used to compete in combat sports. Um, I studied martial arts as a young person, then I began to compete. And I, I, fought, I fought in uh, Connecticut. Um, I, I fought in Atlantic City, New Jersey. I fought in PA. And I even fought in the Madison Square Garden in New York City a few times. It was a, a, a very um, wonderful time in my life. I enjoyed it very much. I, I want to share, though, with you one fight I had in Jersey City. Uh, the fight didn't, anybody from Jersey City? All right. Y'all tough in Jersey City, boy, let me tell you. This fight didn't, <laughs> this fight didn't <laughs> turn out as I thought. So it was, it was a three, it was a three round fight. And I get there and I'm looking at my opponent and I'm looking at this guy standing across me. He's this big, tall, slow, oaky dokey looking Dude, that I'm thinking to myself, this is going to be a piece of cake. There's no way this guy's going to touch me. He's too slow. So, round one started. Ding, ding, ding. And I'm, I'm in him. Boom, boom. 
Boom, 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 boom. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Bam. Ding, 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 round one's done. Boy didn't touch me. Boy never touched me. I'm ready. I got this. Round two. Ding, ding. Bam. 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 Now, ding, ding, ding. Round two. There's a deal. Toward the end of round two, I started getting a little tired. Mm. Round three. Here he come. Bam. 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 This guy hit me with something. To this day, I don't know what it was. Knocked me clean out. I was on the mat, completely knocked out. Now, this was the problem. I wasn't disciplined in my road work. You see, to be a fighter, you need to work on your cardiovascular, right? You have to run when you're a fighter. And I wasn't disciplined in my running. May I suggest to you that some of you have been getting knocked down spiritually because you've not been disciplined in your prayer life. In the book, Revival God's Way, Leonard Ravenhill wrote this. He said, prayer is not a preparation for the battle. It is the battle. He said, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous preacher disarms the devil before the preacher even gets into the pulpit. Anyone here called to be a preacher? Hands up, preachers. Listen to this. This is going to challenge you because it challenges me. He says, preaching does not scare the devil. Preaching does not scare the devil. Loved ones, Satan has been at this thing a lot longer than we have. Right? The devil heard Jesus preach when he preached the Sermon on the Mount. The devil heard Peter preach when he preached on the day of Pentecost and the Spirit of God fell and the New Testament church was birthed. Satan heard, heard men like Martin Luther preach, that great reformer of the church. Listen, I don't think Satan gets impressed by our little meager biblical expositions. But then he says this, but he says, by prayer, we put the devil out of bounds. He says, preaching is a time for public, public reaping after private weeping. He said, we ascend the pulpit, deliver the heaven-breathed word, and then gather up the spoils for God. I love this last part. He says, we set the traps in prayer, we gather the spoils in preaching. Listen to me, loved ones. Whether your calling is in pastoral ministries or communication or business or education or music or art, it is prayer that will make you effective and prayer that will make you powerful. It is prayer, loved ones, that will allow you to advance God's kingdom with the gifts and talents God has given you. It's going to be through prayer. So I believe scripture shows us that those men and women who stood tallest for the Lord were those who knelt lowest before the Lord in prayer. We're talking about prayer. You see, loved ones, it's time that we, 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 we need to grow up in our prayer life. Hmm. As I said, this is not kids' church anymore. Oh, when we were kids, we would say, now I lay me down to sleep. Who remembers that? I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Remember that? And then you went down the list. God bless mommy and daddy and grandma and papa. God bless my dog. God bless my cold fish. You, everything. That was okay when we were children. But we are grown ups now. And it's time we grow up in our prayer life. If you ever want to read anything powerful about prayer, read anything by a man named E.M. Bounds. 
Ian Bounds. He is challenged and encouraged me in my prayer life. Listen to what he said. What the church needs today is not more machinery or better. Not new organizations or more and novel methods, but men and women whom the Holy Ghost can use. Men and women who are mighty in prayer. Listen to this. He says, the Holy Ghost does not anoint methods or plans. He anoints people. You are in the right place. The education you are receiving from Valley Forge University will help you achieve all that God has called you to do. You're in the right place. Education and training is important. I'm saying it again. Education and training is important. But without prayer, your education and your training will have no power. I want you to live the spiritual empowered life. I, I want God to use you to advance his kingdom wherever God sends you. I want God to use you to speak words of life wherever he, he positions you. But loved ones, we must be men and women of prayer. Of prayer. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18, the Apostle Paul says these words. He says, pray continually or, 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 or constantly. And he says, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. No, it's, it's, I find it interesting that many of us have prayed this prayer. Lord, what is your will for my life? Have you ever prayed that prayer? Show of hands, hands up. God, what do you want me to do? What, what is your will? Guess what? He said it right here. My will is for you to pray. You see, so many times, loved ones, we want God's unspoken word for our life when we aren't dedicated enough and committed enough to read his word, to hear his written word for our life. He said, I want you to pray continually. Now, one application of that text is that God wants us to be in constant communication with him throughout our day praying short prayers. Right? When he says pray continually or constantly, obviously we can't pray 24-7. We've got to work and eat and do things that we need to do. But I believe what Paul is telling us here is that God wants us to throughout our day share little, little short prayers. As we're walking through campus, a little short prayer. As we go into Wawa, a little short prayer. As, as, as we're standing there and, and we feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit to tell somebody about Jesus, give a, a, a little prayer. Continually. Constantly. That's important. But listen to me. We must have times, though, of focused and extended prayer. Look at me. Look at me. We must have times of focused and extended prayer. We see this in the life of our Lord. The Bible tells us that it was our Lord's custom to get up early to leave the disciples, to leave the people and go to a private place to pray. The Garden of Gethsemane was a place where our Lord would frequently go to and pray. Private prayers. Let me say this to you. If the only time where you're praying is when we're walking to class or driving in our cars, I suggest we're not praying enough. We're not praying enough. As I said, my wife and I will be celebrating 31 years of marriage. Who knows, if we, if we didn't spend quality time together, our marriage would be in trouble. Can I get a witness? See, the, we, 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 we have made it a, a point in our lives to spend time together, to talk to each other, to work on that relationship. God, I believe God is telling somebody right now, I need you to work on our relationship. God is telling somebody right now, oh, I know you love me. I, I know you believe in me, but, but you've, you, you, you've neglected our time. Prayer. 
there must be times when we get away. Love I'm telling you this because I want, I want you to be all that God has called you to be. And I want you to get this spiritual discipline now in your hearts. So as you continue to go and move, God will show you how he will bless you through prayer. Jesus, our Lord, gave a very powerful message on prayer in Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. Listen to what he said. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners and uh, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who was seen in secret and your father who is in sees in secret, he will reward you. Now listen, obviously, yes, there are times when public praying is needed and is the right thing to do. But what Christ is saying here, loved ones, is that those times when we're uh, doing public prayers, those prayers shouldn't be long and drawn out just so people could think that we're spiritual. Hmm? And listen, I can talk about a preacher because I'm a preacher. We're the worst at that. We're the worst at that. You know, I heard someone say, our public prayers should be short, but our private prayers should be long. I think we, get, we got that backwards. When we get in front of a crowd, we'll pray for an hour and a half. But when it's just us in Christ, we barely give him five minutes. You see, Christ is telling us that when we pray, when we go to prayer, He's saying we must find a private place where we can go and be alone with him. I want, I want, I want to preach to you about this. I want to preach to you about this. I, I need you to, and you might have a, a place and a time of prayer. Let me say it again. Have a place and a time of prayer. Almost like making an appointment with God. And some of them might say, that ain't spiritual. He ain't spiritual. Talking about an appointment with God. What are you talking about? Let me tell you something. Believers that I know, they love the Lord. Believers that I know, they've been saved since 1929. Can they get a witness? Believers that I know, that they don't have a, 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 a specific place and time of prayer, their prayer life is inconsistent. Their prayer life is inconsistent. Do they love the Lord? Yes, they do. Will we be in heaven together? Yes, we will. But I believe they're missing out on some of the peace and joy that God has for them. I believe they're missing out on some of the anointing and, and prophetic words God has for them. Have a time. And have a place. And I, I, I understand maybe being here on campus, that might be difficult to do, but you, I want you to work on this. I want you to think about this. A time and a place where you get away with God. A time and a place. There's a, a, we have a study in our home where I go to and pray. And uh, my wife was in my study one time, and she was kind of looking around on the walls of my study. I have these pictures on the walls of my study, and, and, and my wife that I love with all my heart, I call her my Caribbean queen. She's my baby. She looked at the walls in my study and looked at me and said, your study is full of dead white people. You see, <laughs> on the studies in my wall, I have pictures of Charles Spurgeon, the prince of preachers. I have a picture of a man named Martin Lloyd-Jones. He's a great expositor from Wales. You see, there are men in my life 
that have blessed me. And there are men in my life that I respect. There, there are men in my life that when I was a young preacher, they would allow me to come into the church and, and preach in their churches. And I respect those men. I will always love those men. But my heroes, loved ones, my heroes are those men of old that God used in a powerful way to change the world and to advance the kingdom of God. Those are my heroes. Those are the men that I said, Lord, make me like that man. Give me that anointing. Give me that power. Um, give me that commitment to go away and pray. And one, another one of my heroes is a man named John Wesley. I don't know if you guys have heard of John Wesley. He was a great man of God. He, he actually started the Methodist church, I believe, John Wesley may be turning in his grave as he's looking at the Methodist church today. But he was a great and mighty man of God. John Wesley was a part of one of the great revivals that happened in our nation. Mighty man of God, preached in, I think, three different continents. Powerful man of God. It is said that he spent two hours every day in prayer, starting at four o'clock in the morning. Think about that for a second. He gave two hours every day in prayer, starting at four o'clock in the morning. Someone who knew him well wrote this. He said, though, he said that, 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 uh, 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 John Wesley thought prayer to be his business more than anything else. Think about that. For John Wesley, this great man of God, Prayer, prayer was about his business more than anything else. So many of us, loved ones, prayer is the last thing we think about, not the first. Students of Valley Forge, in this new year, will you make prayer your business more than anything else? Will you do that in this new year? Let me share with you a little bit of my, my prayer habit. Is it okay if I come down here? See, understand, I, I, I didn't come into ministry with, with, with a pedigree of any sort. I got saved later in life, right? I didn't attend or graduate from a, a wonderful school like Valley Forge. My grandfather, who I never met, was a preacher, but my dad had nothing good to say about him. The only thing my dad said about my grandfather was he was a garbage man during the day and he preached on Sundays. So you see, see, I don't have that kind of background. And so I need all the help I can get. So for me, I'm talking about me now. For me, I got to get up early and pray. I got to get up early and pray. You see, I, I love my wife, Sophia, as I said. I love her with all my heart. And I, I love my, my, my Dobrin pincher, Rico. That's my boy. He's the best armor bear I ever had. I love Rico, my Doberman Pinscher. But for me, for this man, I want God's voice to be the first voice I hear every day. God's voice. So for me, I've got to get up early before my family gets up. I've got to get up early so I can get in the presence of God. When I get up, it's still dark outside. When I get up, my house is quiet. Why? Because I need to get in the presence of God. I know the man I used to be. I know what he saved me from. I know what he delivered me from. So I need to get in the presence of God. So I get up early. I get up early. And see, I believe, loved ones, if, if God's voice is the first voice I hear every day, God's already taking care of whatever's going to happen that day. Can I get a witness? Whatever I face, whatever challenge comes about, God's already got me covered. He's already given me a word while I spent time with the master. Do you remember the, uh, Peter and, 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 and at one point in the book of Acts, the, the religious leaders were amazed by all that they were able to do and say. And the Bible says, the Bible says that the religious leaders said they could tell they were uneducated men. But the Bible says, but they could tell that these men had been with Jesus. Hallelujah. So I've got to get with the Lord. I've got to get with the Savior 
every day. One of my regrets in life was I wasn't able to serve in the armed forces. Um, if, 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 if ever I'm in a diner or a restaurant, if I see someone in the armed services or even someone in the police force, I'll offer to buy their meal because I appreciate what they do for us every day. So I wasn't able to serve, but understand, the Bible says we're in a spiritual warfare. Can I get a witness? I said, can I get a witness? You guys need to understand something. Satan is not your friend. He wants to destroy you. He wants to stop God's plan for your life. So this might sound a little crazy, but for me, when I get up early in the morning, in my mind, I'm thinking, the enemy is out. He's up early. I got to get up early too. That's what's going on in my head. Y'all got to forgive me. I, I'm not that smart. But for me, I've got to put it that way in my mind that this is spiritual warfare. And, and, he, and he's up early, Sophie. Because he wants to destroy my family. He wants to destroy my marriage. He wants to destroy my, my children and, and my, my grandsons. He, he wants to destroy my church. He's waiting. The Bible says that Satan prowls around like a roaring lion seeking somebody to devour. So he wants to destroy my family. So I got to get up early, brother. I got to get up before they get up and cover them in prayer. I pray for you, Valley Forge. Before Ben of you even get out of your beds, I'm on my knees praying for this school. Praying for Dr. Kim. Praying that God would bless you, that, that this school would raise up mighty disciples that would leave this campus and go out through the world and make disciples. I'm praying for you. Will we make prayer our business above everything else? Listen, I'm not going to tell you when to pray. I'm just going to tell you, you need to pray. You need to pray. Listen to me, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, I had to do a funeral of a 19-year-old boy that got murdered on the streets of Philadelphia. 19 was part of our youth group. Left our area, moved to South Philly, came out of a store. Man, shot him, murdered him. That was on a Tuesday. On a Friday, I get a call from one of our members. There's a man in her daughter's school with a gun, and the kids are hiding in the classroom. And they call out swatting everybody else. We are living in dark times. Do you hear me, loved ones? We are living in dark times. It is spiritual warfare. And listen, we can't fight this fight with our hands. It's a spiritual fight. We need spiritual weapons. Pray. Pray for our nation. Will you be people of prayer? As I get ready to close, I want to share something with you guys. Um, many, many years ago, before I was saved, I was watching a horror movie. Don't even judge me. Don't even, he ain't spiritual. He watched horror movies. Don't even judge me. I wasn't saved at this time. I was watching this horror movie, and, and it was a vampire movie. It was a vampire movie. And there was one scene, one scene that whew, it grabbed me. And I wasn't even saved then, but this scene grabbed me. It was a very climactic scene where this, this you know, the lead uh, villain vampire, he was about to attack one of the heroes of the show. And he's walking toward the hero like this. You know how they do. Right? And the hero, and the hero no, he pulled out what? The cross, right? Pulled out the cross, crucifix, right? And the hero was like, pot out! Your mama, pot out! Right in his face. Now, listen, that's supposed to scare the vampire, right? Mm -mm. This vampire, Sophie, he grabbed the cross with his hand. The cross burned up. I was like, whoop. This is what he said. He said, you've got to believe for that to work. <sighs> Ooh. Ooh. I wasn't even saved, and I felt the conviction. 
What am I saying? Listen, our faith is not in prayer. Our faith is not in faith. Our faith is in Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Maybe you're sitting here in this chapel today. And maybe your faith is not in Jesus Christ. You're sitting in this Christian university. Maybe you've been faking it. Because everyone expects you to be a Christian. You go to Valley Forge Christian University, you should be a Christian. And your roommate and your classmates and your teacher, they all they, they think you're this spiritual, Christ-loving person. But you don't even know where you are right now spiritually. Maybe that's you today. Maybe that's you today. Maybe you're here and you're in broken fellowship with Jesus. I want to speak to two groups. I'm going to speak to those who are here that you may be in broken fellowship with Christ. I want to say something to you and listen to me. Listen to me. If you give your heart to Christ, he said, Lord, come into my life. Come, come into my heart. I don't care when you did it. Because of Jesus, there is nothing, look at me, there is nothing you can do to make the Father love you less because of Jesus. And there's nothing you can do to make the Father love you more. He loves you as much as now as he will ever love you. Don't think, well, if I pray for two hours a day like John and Wesley, God will love me more. But because of his son, he already loves you. So if you're in broken fellowship, Christ is he's, he's, he's standing right there waiting, saying, come on back. Let's meet together in prayer. I miss you, Christ is saying. He's saying, I miss the times we spent together. He's telling someone, I haven't left you. I will never leave you. those who are here and you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ, let me tell you something. It is not about religion. It's not about, about religion. It's about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I grew up in church. I grew up in church. My mother wasn't playing. Can I get a witness? My mom was old school. Anybody had an old school mother? Old school. Old school. She ain't asked me, I better, would you like to go to church? She ain't asked me nothing. She's like, you going. You're going to smile while you're there. Who knows what I'm talking about? See, brother, my mother, she, she never put me on timeout. But she would take time out of her day to whip my tail. You know what I'm saying? My mom was, she ain't play, boy. So when I was a little boy, I was like, mom was like, you going to church? And I went to church. But it was just church. And when I turned 18, she gave me the choice whether I wanted to go or not since I wasn't saved, I chose not to go. I lived life any way I wanted to live. I was a sinner. I was a sinner. But then God did something amazing in my life. 34 years ago, he sent an angel from Jamaica to Philadelphia met this beautiful young woman, 22 years old, named Sophia. And, but, you know, I was like, you know me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we decided just to be friends. <laughs> we, we said, you know what? We're just going to be friends. That's it. Because I, I dropped out of undergrad. At that point, I had gone back to college. I started going back to church. Still wasn't saved. But just, just friends. She had a, a boyfriend in, in Jamaica, Peter. Peter, yeah. Peter. She's going to marry Peter. Whatever. So I said, just friends, just friends. As time went on, our relationship started to get romantic. And, and one day, sister, she said to me, she said, I got to talk to you. I said, what's, 
What's up, baby? What can I do? So you know you, you know you're my boo. What you want, baby? She looked me straight in the ass and said, I can't be with you. I'm like, did you fall and bump your head? What are you talking about? She said, I can't be with you. She said, because I'm a Christian and you're not. We would be unequally yoked. I've never heard that before. I'm looking at this beautiful young woman that had a faith in Christ that I didn't have. And God used that woman's faith in Jesus me into the kingdom. And I begin to, to see what does this mean? Not religion. A personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And, you know, as I was searching, she kept me at arm's length. Because you know we lie, brother. You know we do. You know what I mean? We've been lying. Yeah, baby, I love Jesus. Mm -mm. No, she, yeah, right. No, no. She kept me at arm's length. Just to make sure. About six months after that, we were together at a service. There was an altar call, Sophie. I was, I was sitting next to my Sophie. And I gave my life to Jesus. Past, relation, past religion. Relationship. Two things. Know who you are in the Lord. Don't sell out. Young women, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. You are princess. You are daughter of the Most High God. Don't sell out. Find, look at me ladies, find a man who loves Jesus more than he loves you. Right? Find a man who loves Christ more than he loves you and I promise everything will be alright. my brothers there, we're my men. Be men of God. Respect the women as if she was your mother or your sister. Respect them. Be that spiritual leader in that relationship. Don't sell out. If you're here today and you've never said yes to Jesus, maybe you may say yes to Jesus today. life today give him your heart today begin to trust him totally today would you close your eyes if you're here today and crisis he's your he's he's your savior but you're you're in broken in relationship begin right now to talk with him and say lord forgive me Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me for turning my back on you, Jesus. I repent. I turn from my sins. I want that closeness again, Christ. I'm back, Jesus. And I'm not going anywhere this time. Just pray that prayer if, 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 if that's you. He hears that prayer. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Christ, to say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I fall short. I, 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 I admit to you I've done wrongs. Come to my heart. I believe, Jesus, that I am saved and I'll go to heaven because of what you did on the cross. Not because of my good works. I turn from my sin. I turn to you the savior, savior of my life. The Bible said if you pray the prayer, you're saved. You're born again. See, I know of young people that have gone to the school and they didn't know Jesus. They didn't know Jesus. Probably before you look at me. Jesus Christ loves you. You're in the right place. Just give your life to him completely.
Can I bless you? Would you stand with me? I'm going to pray a prayer over you that I pray over my congregation every Sunday for the last nine years and a prayer that my pastor prayed over me. If you feel comfortable, would you just lift your hands? So may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. May he turn his face to your face and give you peace. Shalom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Give the Lord praise in the house of God. So so much pastor brown you're free to go um feel free to stop by and talk with him afterwards or lingered